Hey guys, it's Phil coming at you with another video. I apologize for the delay in upload, but those that have been rocking with me know that I have shingles. And I've had them for the past couple of weeks and I thought they were going away, but they're still looming. And those that know about shingles, it causes fever and fatigue and I recently caught a cold. So it's been messing with my voice, but I did not want to delay the upload because I know you guys love the content that I'm pushing out and I love helping you guys pass. But in the meantime of the last three weeks, we've had 43 people pass their exams, which means at least two people per day have been passing their exams, which is blowing my mind because it's the based on the community that we all have formed. And from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate everything and all the support that you guys show, but they are as follows. So Molly G, Veronica B, Courtney V, Kyle B, Hannah V, Tori E, Stacy N, Adron R, Bianca R, Deidre J, Jen S, Jasmine L, Thea H, Jasmine G, Katie K, Christina B, Julianne S, Louise G, Valerie H, Kyle B P, Rebecca L, Bridget M, Deborah M, Conchita M, Kim D, Rachel A, Mandy J, Laura B, Vanessa B, Regina R, Angela P, Lashonda G, Amir T, Jeremy B, Amy C, Tina H P, Terrence Y, Pamela S, Joss M, Leticia O, Astrard R, Lisa D, and Lisa W. Ah, it's so amazing to me that we've had so many people, even in the absence, you guys are still rocking with me, still sharing my name, and still letting me know that I was a part of your journey, which from the bottom of my heart, I really, really appreciate because without you guys, I am nothing. If you want me to share your name as well, send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com. And if you want to do me a favor, go to my Facebook page at fill in the gaps and leave a review of how I was a part of your journey and how you passed. I appreciate every single thing that you guys do for me. And if you take anything from me, Make sure that you're taking care of yourself so that way you can take care of business. And a lot of times when we get into the study scene, we feel like we have to push ourselves beyond what we're actually able to do to get the job done. But if we do not take care of ourselves and recharge ourselves, we're not going to be useful for anyone or anything in life. That goes for anything. I have been taking days off to make sure that I am full charge for you guys and helping you pass your exams as well as being effective at my job and effective for the people around me. And I know it is appealing to isolate ourselves and grind our ways through these events. And at certain times, grinding and pushing ourselves to the limits is essential to getting to the goals that we want to do. But there are times where it is not beneficial, such as now. Like if I push myself more than I would have otherwise, when being sick, it is going to lead to more negative results than positive. So when you're doing something, make sure what you're doing is adding up to what you're, you want to go rather than where you think it's taking you because oftentimes we can get lost in the fact that we stop doing the things that have worked for us based on the fact that someone told us something or something that we thought would be more beneficial and there's no shame in the game in saying what I did and what I changed isn't actually leading me to a better result than I thought it would. So I need to reset, go back to what worked and start kicking butt. It's not anything that you have to reinvent because what works for you you know because you've experienced yourself for the entirety of your life so stick to what you know keep doing what you need to do and get the job done and this video in particular is going to be looking at practice questions based on the topics that you suggested on my facebook page so if you want to be a part of that community is fill in the gaps but without further ado let's get into it guys and if you're interested in private tutoring i do offer it still so feel free to reach out to me at berda24 at gmail.com. My schedule tends to book up two to two and a half weeks, if not longer in advance. But if you want to schedule your own session, the web address on the screen, fillinthegaps.as.me, or it'll be in the, the link will be in the description. You can click it. It'll open up my schedule, and you can schedule it yourself. My next study groups are 12-1. Freudian Theory, 12A, Acronym and Practice Questions, and that one is already filling up pretty quick, so if you want to be a part of that, get a hold of me ASAP. 12.15, Human Developmental Theories, 12.22, Community Interventions, 
and those are Sundays from 7 to 9 p.m., often longer because I do a question and answer segment, and we do practice questions in every single one. So send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com for details. And since it's Thanksgiving, I do want to give back to you guys. So if you're interested in 12-1 Freudian theory, you can buy one and get one. So if you buy admission to the study group, you can bring a friend. So if you've bought it already, just send me an email of who you want to bring with you. Or if you want to do that after this video, send me an email and then I'll give you the details for the study group. You send payment and you can bring a friend free. So I keep wanting to give back to you guys and that's how I'm going to do it. Plus, let's celebrate Thanksgiving together. And again, the link to my Facebook page is fill in the gaps. And I do have a podcast. If you want to check me out, it's Fill in the gaps on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. And let's get into the questions, guys. So the first question, so short regard, an outpatient clinic has been working with a family of four upon referral from CPS. CPS sent the family to the social worker for concerns with sexual conduct on behalf of the mother. CPS reports that the mother was caught fondling her daughter. The family has been working on establishing boundaries for the past five months. During the most recent session, the son states that he saw his mother in his sister's room late last night what would be the best thing for the social worker to do in this situation a confront the mother about the son's concerns b review the strategies that the family has been working on with the family c ask the other family members what they think about the son's comment and gather their perspective d ask the daughter about her experience with what her brother has said so we are a social worker in an outpatient clinic working with a family of four upon referral from cps so CPS sent the family to the social worker for concerns of sexual conduct on behalf of the mother. CPS states that the mother was caught fondling the daughter. The family has been working on establishing boundaries for the past five months. In any length of time, we jump on it because it provides context. So during the most recent session, so everyone is together when this happens, the son states that he saw his mother in his sister's room late last night. So what would be the best thing for us to do in this situation? And this is an application question. Why? Because it gives us a clinical scenario that we have to respond to effectively. In this situation, we'd be able to utilize the acronym to guide it. So let's break it down with it. So confront the mother about the son's concerns. Intervene. Why we'd be doing something and challenging the mother and preventing things from happening or progressing the therapeutic relationship in some way. Review the strategies that the family has been working on with the family. Intervene why we are reiterating something and providing something in the session to the family. Ask other family members what they think about the son's comments and gather their perspective. Assess why we're gathering their perspective of the situation to further our analysis. Ask the daughter about her experience with what her brother said. Feelings, why it's getting her subjective point of view, aka what happened in the room with her mom. So quick review, outpatient clinic, family of four, CPS sent them, CPS said that mom fondled the daughter, family's been working on boundaries, the son states that his sister, his mom walked into his sister's room last night. So we're gonna rule out confronting the mother because that's automatically gunning for the mom and saying that she did something with the daughter in the room. So that would be inappropriate because the client is the family, not just the mom at this given situation. We're not going to re review the strategies that the family has been working on because that's us just saying, hey, you guys have been working on boundaries. How about you guys utilize boundaries here? Because boundaries aren't really related to the situation at hand. The situation at hand is the son said mom was in daughter's room last night. So we'd have to address the current situation, even though it's very, very appealing to want to intervene and interject and come up with a solution we have to start with the family and understand their perspective so we can either ask all of the family members what they think about the situation or we can ask the daughter who would be able to tell us directly what happened in that room last night so we're going to rule out c c does seem kind of appealing but we're going to go with a d because for the sole fact that we need to understand what happened in the room and who could better tell us than the daughter because she and the mom were the only ones in the room and the sons made a comment, so we want to ask the daughter directly. So that's how we look at that question in particular. 
Question 2. A newly hired social worker at a community mental health agency walks past a co-worker's office and overhears them say, She's so incompetent and I just wish she would keep her comments to herself. The woman feels uncomfortable in the situation and is unsure what to do in the situation. What would be the best thing for the social worker to do in this situation? A. Confront the co-worker regarding the comments that she heard. B. Schedule to meet with the clinical supervisor to discuss the issue. C. Quit her job and find a different agency since this is a toxic environment. D. Report the social worker to the social work licensing board. So we are a newly hired social worker. So we're new at the agency. We're in a community mental health agency. And we walk past the co-worker's office. And two people are talking. And they say she's incompetent. And I just wish she would keep her comments to herself. So they're degrading a co-worker. Maybe the woman in, a, in general. The woman feels uncomfortable and is unsure what to do in this situation. What would be the best thing to do in this situation? So at this given time, this one is going to be a reasoning question. Why? Because we have to come up with a solution and it's kind of an ethics question because there's a dilemma here. Woman doesn't know what to do, feels uncomfortable, so what should she do in this given moment? So we're not automatically going to report the social worker to the social work licensing board. That's overzealous and we have to do follow the chain of command, and this command is not to automatically go to the social work licensing board because they'll ask, have you gone to the coworker? Have you addressed your supervisor? Have you addressed it at the agency level before trying to provoke someone's license based on the fact that they, you heard a comment? At this time, it's hearsay. We're also going to rule out C of quitting her job to find a different agency because that's pretty over the top as well. You just heard a coworker make a negative comment about someone, maybe potentially you, doesn't mean that you need to quit your job right away because you don't want to let one person rule your entire experience and potential livelihood in this situation. So, do we want to confront the coworker regarding the comment or schedule time with the clinical supervisor? So, if we look back at the question, she feels uncomfortable in the situation. And if we look at the code of ethics, it says if it is not appropriate or possible for you to go to a coworker about a situation, then you have to skip that step and then you go to the clinical supervisor. So for that fact, we would rule out A, confront the coworker regarding the comment. And if you notice the word confront, it's pretty aggressive. And if you're feeling uncomfortable in the situation, you're likely not going to want to go to somebody, especially confront them about it. Especially if we look back, she's unsure what to do. And when you're unsure as a social worker, what do you typically do? You seek out supervision. So the correct answer here, would be scheduled to meet with the clinical supervisor to discuss the issue. And yes, I know you're about to say, well, and normally the answer when I do these questions is to go to the coworker directly. That is the dangers of word association and being black and white on the exam. You have to be open to the gray, respect the question, understand what it's asking you, and connect your answer back to the question every single time. So that's how we'd look at that question in particular. Question three, a social worker in a private practice is meeting with a 35 year old female regarding issues with controlling her anger the woman reports she finds it difficult to sustain relationships because she feels like people are going to hurt her in some way so she hurts them first the woman reports that when people criticize her that it makes her angry or she cuts out people out of her life the woman reports spending two thousand dollars in the past couple of months to improve herself as she feels inferior to people around her the woman feels that the social worker can help her but she likely knows more than the social worker does. What diagnosis best explains the woman's behavior? A, borderline personality disorder. B, antisocial personality disorder. C, histrionic personality disorder. D, avoidant personality disorder. So we are a social worker in a private practice. We are meeting with a 35-year-old female. She's having issues controlling her anger. She finds it difficult to sustain relationships because she feels like people are going to hurt her in some way, so she hurts them first. So she tries to prevent harm to herself, so she harms other people. The one report she, when people criticize her that it makes her angry, or she cuts people out of her life. The one reports spending $2,000 in the past couple of months to improve herself, as she feels inferior to people around her, so trying to fill a void. And the one reports that the social worker can help her, but she likely knows more than the social worker does. 
So this one is going to be a recall question because it's asking us to identify a specific answer and giving us the criteria and stuff to get it done. So anytime you see a diagnosis question, it's going to be a recall because you have to know the diagnosis or know the other diagnosis that it's not to get the right answer. So let's define these in quick, easy terms. So borderline personality disorder is going to have unstable relationships, fear of abandonment, Behaviors that could be risky. Lack of impulse control. Quick cycling moods, just to name a couple of them. Antisocial personality D disorder. Lack of remorse. Aliases or trying to manipulate people for their own gain, doing behaviors that are grounds for arrest, and strives for prestige and power. Histrionic personality disorder, someone strives for attention from other people through appearance or sexual seductiveness they feel inferior to other people and are uncomfortable when attention is not on them avoidant personality disorder someone avoids social interaction because they feel like others are going to judge them in some way and they stick to activities that they are good at. So when we look at this we have 35 year old female Issues with control and anger. Finds it difficult to sustain relationships. She feels like people are going to hurt her. When people criticize her, she tries to cut them off. She spent $2,000 in the past month. She feels inferior to people. And she feels a social worker can help her, but she knows more than that person. So at this given time, we're going to rule out avoidant personality disorder. Because this lady's not avoiding people based on the fact that they're going to judge her. Or that she's going to be criticized in some way. She does say... Now, when people criticize her, it makes her angry, but it does not say that she's avoiding social interaction. If anything, she wants to be in social interaction and is trying to get help for it because she says she's finding it difficult to stay in relationships, but she wants the relationships, meaning she's continuously getting inside of them. We're going to rule out histrionic right now because it's not saying that she's striving for attention from other people or that she's utilizing her appearance or sexual seductiveness to get into relationships. It does say that she has difficulties sustaining the relationships and that she wants people to want her, but that she's not going over the top. And an easy way to remember histrionic personality disorder is she's not trying to be a part of history, meaning she's not trying to do over the top actions to get people to recognize and notice her. So... Do we have borderline personality disorder or antisocial personality disorder? So these personality disorders can be kind of very, very similar, but different reasons. So unstable relationships. Most people that have antisocial personality disorder are going to have unstable relationships, but for the sole fact that they've been manipulating people and trying to get gain from them. So they don't really want to be in relationships for the fact of relationships. They do it to gain something or thrive and improve themselves in some way. And it doesn't say that she's lacking remorse. If anything, she is fearing abandonment and trying to get people to want her through and proving herself because deep down she does not feel like she's worthy enough. So we're going to rule out antisocial because it doesn't say she's doing illegal behaviors or striving for prestige or power and not trying to manipulate people. She's just engaged in an unstable relationship, this fear and abandonment, doing things that could potentially be risky like spending money that she may not have lack in impulse control and she is difficult to control in her anger so quick cycling moods so the answer here would be borderline personality disorder so that's how we'd look at that question in particular
Question four. The community-based social worker has been working with clients that struggle with chronic homelessness for the past two years. Throughout her work, she has realized that there is a high correlation between people who abuse drugs and those that are homeless. The social worker would like to develop a program to help decrease the amount of drug use among people who are homeless in hopes that it will decrease the rate of homelessness in her area. What would, be, what would the social worker need to do first in this situation? A. Gather the needed resources to develop her program to decrease the rate of substance use in her community. B. Work with some of her current clients to identify what would be helpful in decreasing their rate of homelessness. C. Identify the desired outcomes that she would like to see as a result of her program. D. Gather information from her colleagues to understand how they have assisted their clients that struggle with substance use to better inform her program. So we have a community-based social worker. She's been working with people that struggle with chronic homelessness for two years. Any length of time, jump on it because it paints the picture. So she's been doing this two years. She's realized that there's high correlation between people who abuse drugs and that are homeless. She would like to develop a program. So we have to get our program development hat on in the process of that to help decrease the amount of drug use among people who are homeless in hopes that it decreases the rate of homelessness in her area. And what would we need to do first? So this is where we need to know program development, which when you look at the community, you often have to view what you would do with a client right off the get-go. So at this given time, we would not want to identify the desired outcomes that she would like to see as a result because it's not all about her. We are trying to impact the community, not the social worker in any way, shape, or form. So we're not trying to drive what we think needs to get done. We already come up with a hypothesis. So we're not going to walk into a community and say, this is what you need to work on because you wouldn't tell an individual client, all right, I know that you have alcohol use. How do we cut that bad cat down? And the client doesn't want that. So we're not going to drive what she wants to look at. Yes, we want to have outcomes, but it's not our outcomes because we need to start where the people where we're working with are at. So we are not going to gather the needed resources to develop her program to decrease the rate of substance use in her community because she doesn't know the goals and the objectives. So how do we know what resources could be helpful in this given situation? We can't get the cart before we get the horse and we can't get the horse before we get the cart because we don't know what it needs to look like and what it needs to do. So we can either work with our current clients to identify what would be helpful to, for decreasing their rate of homelessness or we can consult with other colleagues what have worked for them to improve her program or inform it in some way. So if we think about this right now, do we want to work and ask people in our direct community what they would like to see and how we can help them? Or do we want to go to a colleague, understand what has assisted clients maybe outside of our community to inform our community and what they need and want? So at this given time, we're going to rule out D because we need to work with some of our current clients and understand what they want. That would almost be like a focus group because we need to one, figure out what the community wants, two, figure out what we have in order to get that done, three, identify who can help us get there, and then we need to figure out and solidify goals and objectives, and then we deliver it, and then we evaluate it. So if we were being semantical, we would do one, and then two and then we'd not do three or c because c would not be the third one but if it said identify the desired outcomes the community would like to see then that would be the third one and then d we would not do because we need to talk to the people that we're directly interacting with but we could do d if we were trying to base off what change we would like to see in the community prior to asking the community what they would like to see. But we would never go to an outside community to see what worked and bring it back in because we don't know what the community exactly wants to look at. So the answer here is to start where the clients are and help mobilize the change that they would like to see. The next question and the last question, question five, a 45 year old female has been working with an outpatient social worker for the past three months to help improve her anxiety. 
The woman reports that she finds it difficult to trust people and that she has left employment in the past because she felt like people were talking about her. The woman reports that she would like to improve her ability to develop relationships with people. What should the social worker do first in this situation? A. Inquire about the woman's paranoia and assist her with identifying ways to combat it. B. Gather information around how the woman would like to develop better relationships with people. C. Provide information to the woman around how to develop healthier relationships with people. D. Gather information around the anxiety symptoms the woman has been experiencing. So, at this time, we have a 45-year-old female. She's been working with an outpatient social worker, so we're an outpatient social worker any length of time. Jump on it, three months. Her goal is to improve her anxiety. The woman reports she finds it difficult to trust people, and she's left employment in the past because she thought they were talking about her. The woman reports she would like to improve her ability to develop relationships with people. So what do we need to do first? And this is going to be an application question. Why? Because it's a clinical scenario and we have to work and walk this client through the steps on how to get the job done. So we can utilize the acronym. So let's apply it now. Inquire about the woman's paranoia and assist her with identifying ways to combat it. Assess. Why? Because we are walking with the woman, gathering information about her mental health, and then working with her to identify the steps. Gather information around how she would like to develop better relationships. This one is going to be feelings. Why? Because it's getting her direct perspective on what she would like to see on how to develop the better relationships. Because that's not like a clinical or objective outcome. That's her specific goal, and we need to have her explain it a little better. Provide information to the woman on how she would develop relationships with people. Educate. Why? Because we're providing her information in some way, shape, or form. Gather information around the anxiety symptoms the woman is experiencing. Assess why, again, it's gathering that clinical and objective data. So let's look back at the question. 45-year-old female, outpatient social worker, three months. She wants to improve her anxiety. The woman reports she finds it difficult to trust people. She has left employment in the past because she felt like people were talking about her. She would like to develop or improve her ways to develop relationships with people. So we're automatically going to rule out C because we're not going to instantly tell her this is how you develop better relationships. Yeah, she said she would like to improve her ability, but we don't even know what that means for her, what she would like to obtain. So us throwing information at her like this is how you do it, go and do it, is not starting where she's at. That is too quick. We're also going to rule out A because yes, it is an assess, but we can't assume that this lady's paranoid. She didn't say that she was struggling with paranoia. She said that she finds it difficult to trust people and she left employment, but that doesn't mean that she's actively paranoid about anything or that people are out to get her in some way, shape, or form. That might have just been her anxiety that talked her out of staying in the job. So don't overthink and don't overassign. So do we want to gather information on how she could better develop relationships with people or do we want to gather information around her anxiety symptoms? So if you're only sticking with what she said at the beginning to help improve her anxiety, D is going to be the answer. But if you're sticking with it and not choosing the answer prior to finishing the question, she wants to improve her ability to develop relationships with people. So we're going to rule out gathering information about her anxiety symptoms. Yes, that's originally what she wanted, but later in the question, she specified and gathered and provided more information. So we need to understand her situation a little better. So we need to gather information around how she would like to develop better relationships with people. And that would be feelings. So that's at the top of the hierarchy, as well as the question confirmed it. So that's how we'd look at that question in particular. So leave any comments down below with any feedback that you have. Slap that like button so that way I know that you enjoyed the content. And subscribe for more videos. We're close to 10,000 subscribers, so let's push past that, guys. And if you want to get a notification that I upload, hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell icon right next to it. And again, I do offer individual tutoring. If you'd like me to walk you through pro the process that I went through today, my email is berda24 at gmail.com or click the link in the description, click on my tutoring schedule, and you can self-schedule yourself. My next Sunday study groups are 12-1, Freudian Theory, 12-8, Acronym of Practice Questions, 12-15, Human Developmental Theories, 12-22, Community Interventions, and those are from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. My email is berda24 at gmail.com. 
My Facebook page is Fill in the Gaps, and my podcast is Fill in the Gaps on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. From the bottom of my heart, guys, I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys so much for the support. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. I hope you guys have a safe and happy Thanksgiving with your family. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.